There is a second factor that is important to consider when you are creating and evaluating indexes, and that is the selectivity of the index. When we ask how selective an index is, what we're really talking about is a measure of how unique or distinct each value in the index is. The more distinct each value is, the greater advantage we can take of the tree structure of the index, because we're able to eliminate all the values that don't match and quickly zero in on just the values that interest us. And so what we want is to aim to create indexes that are highly selective, because this helps us to quickly find the rows that we're interested in while reading a minimum number of blocks both from the index and any subsequent table operations. Sometimes it's easier to understand a concept by having a couple of examples of that concept to consider. So let's do that with selectivity. The most selective indexes are indexes that are unique, so any primary key is a very selective index. Other examples include things like social security numbers or email addresses. We expect that these are going to be distinct for every row in the table, and in fact, we might even have unique indexes on these columns to prevent two instances of a user from having the same email address or social security number. We also have a column like phone number, which may contain a few duplicates due to the same phone number being reissued over time, but generally is very unique. At the other end of the spectrum, a column such as gender is not very selective at all. There are only two possible values, so we would expect the data to be roughly divided evenly between these two values. Status codes are another example of columns that are typically not very selective. In each of these cases, there just aren't very many unique values, so for any one of the values specified, we're going to get back a very large percentage of the rows in the table, and this doesn't really help us trim our data set down to a reasonable size. Of course, most columns fall somewhere in the middle of this continuum, and what exactly their selectivity is depends upon the distribution of the data in your database. They may or may not form good index candidates on their own, and may need to be combined with other columns, just depending upon that distribution of data. So why is index selectivity so important? We'll visualize the process of using an index in a SQL statement to understand this. When Oracle uses an index in a SQL statement, it reads all of the matching entries from the index and then uses the row IDs in those entries to know what rows from the table it needs to read. In a selective index, there are only a few matching entries in the index, and therefore, Oracle only has to read a few blocks from the table to get the actual data that it needs. But if the index has poor selectivity, we'll have a lot of entries returned from the first step, and a lot of entries means a lot more rows to read from the table. As we know, these rows are distributed relatively randomly in the table, so if we have a lot of rows to read from the table, we may end up reading most or all of the table in this scenario. So what has happened here is that we've had to pay the cost of reading the index, and then the cost of reading most or all the table anyway. So this is actually less efficient than if we would have just read the entire table in the first place. So when the Oracle Optimizer looks at statistics on your table and index, this is one of the things that it's trying to figure out. And if the index is not selective enough, Oracle will use a full table scan because that's more efficient. And so even though we're talking about the number of blocks read, we know intuitively that the more data that we have to read, we'll probably have to perform more disk access, and we'll need to use more CPU to process that data, and the end result will be a SQL statement that takes longer. If you read about Oracle, you'll see different numbers mentioned, like that if you read more than 10% of the rows or 5% of the rows, then Oracle will not use the index. In reality, there is no magic number that you can say that if your statement uses greater than X percent of the rows, then your index won't get used. These are just guidelines. What Oracle is doing is calculating the number of reads it would need to do either way, and choosing the path where it has to read and process the least amount of data. Still though, even though these are just guidelines, it is good to keep in mind that if you create an index, and the index is going to return 5% or more of the rows, it is highly likely that the index is not going to get used. What you really want to do is work on making your index and the SQL statements that use the index as selective as possible. Let's formally discuss a formula that we can use to calculate and compare the selectivity for a column, because this will help us in evaluating if a column is a good candidate for an index. To do so, what we'll do is take the number of distinct values for the column in the index and divide this by the total number of rows in the table. So applying this formula, a unique index would have a value of 1, because we would have the same number of distinct values that there are rows in the table. What this tells us is that higher values as we approach 1 are better, 
These indexes are going to be more selective and do a better job of discerning out only the rows of interest to us and therefore provide better performance. Another way of looking at this problem is to flip the numerator and the denominator to where we are dividing the total number of rows in the table by the number of distinct values. And this tells us, for any key value in the index, how many rows we would expect to be returned. In this case, lower numbers are better, because lower numbers mean that we're being more selective and getting fewer rows back. So how do we put some numbers to these values? Let's take the case of a single column index first, because that's the easiest to understand. The denominator is very simple. That is simply the number of rows in the table, and we can just do a count over all the rows in the table to get this value. For the numerator, what we want to do is count all the distinct values in the column. And so the way we do this is to use the syntax shown. We have our count function, and inside we're doing a distinct select over the column name. So putting these two values together, we get a measure of the selectivity of this column. Now I do want to warn you, if you do have large tables, the statement shown on this slide can be fairly expensive in terms of system resources on your Oracle server. So these statements are best run in a test environment or at non-peak times if you're running them against your production database. If you are interested in looking at the selectivity of multiple columns in a table, you can also do so by looking at the statistics that Oracle has on that table. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that statistics for the table are up to date. And you can do that by running this query here, which will pull the last analyzed date out of the All Tables view. If you look at this date and decide it's prudent to regather stats on the table to make sure that they're up to date, you'll want to take and use the DBMS Stats package in Oracle. I'm showing two ways to call DBMS stats here. The first is the simplest form, where Oracle will actually compute statistics over all rows in the table. All you need to provide is the owner or schema name of the table and the table name itself. The second example shows where you just want to sample some of the rows of the table, in this case 25%. The reason that you might want to just sample some of the table is that the table might be very large. So looking at every row to compute stats will take a very long time and use a lot of system resources. And you may be confident that your data distribution doesn't vary that much, so sampling a logical percentage of rows will give you the results that you need. Once you are satisfied that Oracle has up-to-date statistics for your table, you can simply run this query against the All Tab Columns view, and this will show you the number of distinct values for each column. The result that you will get back will look something like what I have here, and this is useful for being able to quickly scan through the columns in your table to be able to understand what columns tend to be more unique.